Alrighty, so today, in this video, in this class, and whatever you want to call this, we're going to just basically practice using substitution on a system of equations. Um, 2.6 and 2.7 introduced and taught the concept, so 2.8 is just some practice problems, just looking through the practice problems, that's all we're, we're dealing with here. Um, so we'll go just through it and work through these problems. So, with substitution, the whole idea is making sure that you have the two pieces, right, that are equal to each other, one being a variable all by itself, okay, which in question number one, we have both equations that way, but question number two, we've only got one equation that way. And just like with substitution in any sport, that equal sign with a variable all by itself is telling us that we've got a position here, players here, that can be substituted. So this is what it looks like. So I know that y is in the same position as negative 2x minus 6. So then I look at my other equation and say, okay, now I'm going to substitute that y because it's equal, this equation tells me they're equal, with the other piece, with the other player. I'm subbing in a new player. Okay, subbing out the y, or I guess this y, subbing in negative 2x minus 6. Okay, so now that I've got them set up, I've noticed now we've only got the x terms. That's what we want. Now we can solve this. So I can add a 7x to both sides, giving me 5x. Add a 6 to both sides, giving that equal to, so that canceled, that canceled, to negative 5, divide by 5, and we get x equals negative 1. Now that's only half our answer, because in a system we're looking for the point the point where they intersect. So now that I've got one of mine, I take one of these original equations and say now that I know what x is, I can substitute x in and solve for y. So y is negative 4. So my answer is negative 1, negative 4. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Okay, so if we look at number 2, so I've got y equals that whole piece. So the way to think about it, if you need a more visual, is I've got one player, y. I've got another player that's negative 2x plus 14. Okay, they're both, they both play the same position. Now, out here on the field, this other equation, I've got y out there playing, but y isn't doing so great. So I want to substitute in for y Take them on the bench, substitute in negative 2x plus 14. Okay, I didn't really write enough space, did I? Okay, everything else in this equation is the same. Negative 8x, negative 8x, plus 6 times, plus 6 times. This one has y, this one has negative 2x plus 14 equals 4 equals 4. The reason I can substitute it in is because that first equation told me they're the same. Told me they play the same position. So I can end up substituting one in for the other. And the reason I want to substitute in is because on up here I had an x and a y. There's no way for me to solve this and have it be x equals something or y equals something and have just a number. Okay, instead of a another variable. So now what I've done is I've created only one type of variable. So now we can simplify it. So negative 8x plus 6 times negative 2 is negative 12x. 6 times 14 is some number 84 equals 4. Now I can simplify. The x terms are on the same side so I just combine them. Negative 8, negative 12 makes negative 20x. Now I want to get rid of this 84 over to the other side. So I end up with negative 20x equals negative 80. Divide now by negative 20. And we get x equals positive 4. Okay, so that's half my answer. I know my answer is going to be the x value 4, the y value something else. So now, I'm going to substitute one more time. I say, well, now I know what my x is. 
is 4. So let's take this equation and let's substitute 4 in for x and then we can figure out what y is. Negative 8 plus 14 give us positive 6 for y. So where do these intersect? At 4, 6. So if I graphed both of these, that's where we would find them intersecting. So substitution is just another way besides graphing that we can try to figure out what's going on here. Okay? All right, so let's just go through these. Now, sometimes you'll have equations like this where there's no variable already by itself. So if we look at number three, I need to get one of these variables all by themselves. So my suggestion, pick the easiest one. The one without a co coefficient or the one with the smallest coefficient. So I would choose either of these two. The bottom one seems easier, so I'll go with that one. So all I have to do to get y by itself, that first step of getting one variable by itself, is add 7x. So I get y equals negative 20 plus 7x. Okay, now we've done what we did up here. We've set it up so now I know these two are in the same position. So then my other equation is my playing field, right? And I say, you know what? I'm going to write everything exactly the same, except I'm going to remove the y here, sub them out, and I'm going to sub in the negative 20 plus 7x. Now I can solve for x. Now when you have a negative, a minus out front of the number that you're going to multiply by, think of it as negative 2. So that would be positive 40 plus negative 14x equals 40. Now we subtract 40 and I get 0. So 14x minus 14x equals 0. Now 14x minus 14x is actually 0. So now I don't know what my variable is equal to. Okay, let me try to help you understand this. To do this, we're going to have to think through this graphically. Okay, so I know I've got one equation I can graph already, right? So it's y equals negative 20 plus 7x. So it has a y-intercept of negative 20 and it has a slope of 7 over 1. So if we started at negative 20, see this is negative 10, so negative 20 would be down like right about here. So we'd go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the right 1, up 7. Let's see, I might be a little off on my numbering because that should have put me at 13, so 12, 11, 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 1. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, here we go. So there's my first equation. Now what about our second? Well, could we solve this one for y? Yeah, I'd have negative 2y equals negative 14x plus 40. If I divide by negative 2, that becomes y equals negative 14 divided by negative 7 is a, or yeah, is by negative 2 is a positive 7x. 40 divided by negative 2 is a negative 20. Notice, same exact numbers. So that's the same line. So remember when we talked about it graphically, the same line had infinite solutions because they overlapped. Okay, well looking at this one, we got rid of our, our variable, but does 0 equal 0? Yes, that's true, right? What that tells me is it doesn't matter what x value or what y value I put in here, they're all going to work because they're the same graph. Because they're the same graph, I can pick any x and any y combination on that graph, and that's going to work for both of them because they're the same. So that means infinite solutions. So whenever you get rid of a variable and you end up with something that's equal, that's one of our special types of answers, and it's called infinite solutions. These ones, we had one answer, and we knew exactly where it was. 
number three, we've got infinite solutions. Okay? All right, let's try number four now. Okay, so I can either try to get this x by itself, or this y by itself. Probably the x, I like that one. So x minus 2y equals negative 9, so I add 2y to both sides. So I get x equals 2y minus 9. Now, I can take this x and replace it. So I have negative 2 times, substitute in 2y minus 9, minus y equals negative 22. Now I've just got the y's by themselves. I know on most of these we've been swapping out the y with an x term, but you can do it the opposite way. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4y, negative 2 times negative 9, positive 18, minus y equals negative 22. Okay, negative 4y minus 1y would be negative 5y, plus 18 equals negative 22. Subtract 18 from both sides, and we get negative 5y equals negative 40. Divide by negative 5, and we get y equals positive 8. So I know 8 is the y value of where it's going to intersect. But now that I know what y is, I just take this other one, plug in my 8, and solve. That's 16 minus 9 will give us x equals 7. So x value of 7, y value of 8, that's where they intersect. There's one answer here. Okay, now let's take a look at number 5. So, pretty easy to see. I want to get that y by itself. Okay, that's our first step. So we subtract an 8x, giving me y equals negative 8x minus 6. Okay, that's our first step. Now I take this equation, and because I've got y by itself, I'm going to substitute the y with negative 8x minus 6. Then we can multiply through, so 7x minus 40x. So by the way, this is step 2, and now I'm on to step 3. Minus 30 equals 3. Add 30 to both sides. We get 7x minus 40x equals 33. 7 minus 40 is negative 33x equals 33. So divide by negative 33. We get x equals negative 1. So that's the third step. Now that I know that x is negative 1, I take this equation, and in my fourth step, I substitute negative 1 in for the x and solve. And I get 2. And then my last step is, after solving that, putting them together and finding my answer. Okay, and there we go. All right, number 6. I'm going to solve for that x. So x minus 7y equals negative 5. So I add 7y, and I get x equals 7y minus 5. So then I take this x out, and I'm going to put in 7y minus 5. Sub out the x, sub in 7y minus 5, because they play the same position. 3 times 7 is 21y. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15 minus 21y equals 7. Add 15 to both sides. We get 21y minus 21y equals 7 plus 15 is 22. Okay, now notice I'm going to eliminate these, right? That will become 0. Okay, now thinking back to this one, this one we had 0 equals 0, and we knew it was infinite answers. Okay, this one, I've got 0 equals 21. That is not true, is it? Okay, so this is our third type. Okay, so let's show this graphically to get an idea. All right, so I'm going to have to erase all that. But we had 0 equals 21. We got rid of our y variable. So if we solve these for y, subtract 3x, negative 21y equals negative 3x plus 7. All right, turn it into slope-intercept form. We get y equals negative, oh, that would be positive, because negative over negative is positive. 3 over 21 is 1 seventh x, minus 7 over 21 would be 1 third. Okay, 
So if I were to graph that, we'd go down a third, then up one to the right seven. Right about there. Down one to the left seven. I think right there. Something like that. Okay. Well, now what if we try to solve this one for y? So x minus 7y equals negative 5. So I'd minus x, negative 7y equals negative x minus 5 divided by negative 7. I would get y equals positive 1 seventh x plus 5 over 7. Okay, so what do we got? Same slope, different y-intercept. So these lines are parallel. When lines were parallel, we called it no solution. They never intersect. So here's our third type of answer, no solution. If you get rid of your variable and it's not equal, that's when we call it no solution. So kind of to recap, if I get x equals a number and y equals a number, that's called one solution. If I have 0 equals 0, because I got rid of one of my variables, we call that infinite solutions. It's the same line. Right? This means same line. Graphically, same line. Algebraically, 0 equals 0. Okay? And then the third type is if we have 0 equals some other number, like in our case, 22. So it's not, it doesn't work. It's not true. So this one is true, this one would not be true. Then we know that they're parallel lines, which means no solution. Those are the three types of answers. And graphically, same line, infinite. Parallel, no solution. Intersecting, one solution. Algebraically, get rid of a variable and it's not true, no solution. Get rid of a variable and it is true, infinite solutions. Don't get rid of the variables, but get numbers form, one solution, they intersect. All right, so with that in mind, let's keep on trucking. So number seven, let's solve for x. So we'd subtract y, right? So I get x equals negative y minus one. So for x, I plug in negative y minus one, and then we solve. So we get negative five y minus five plus eight y equals 13. Negative 5y and 8y give us 3y. Add 5 to both sides. We get 18 divided by 3. Notice I didn't get rid of my variable, so I know that I'm going to have one answer. The y value is 6. Plug it in. x equals negative 6 minus 1. x equals negative 7. One answer, and there it is. There's substitution right there. All right, looking at number nine. So, um, this is one of those difficult ones where we're not sure which is the easiest variable to solve for. So I'm just going to solve for this smallest one, okay? The smallest number. So I'd subtract 7x from both sides, right? Giving us 6y equals negative 7x plus 6. Divide by 6, and this is why I say it can be a little bit ugly because we've got a fraction here with our x. Okay, but we're still going to treat it the same way. So we can substitute this whole piece in for y. So I'm going to sub out the y and sub in the negative 7 sixth x plus 1 equals 1. Now the nice thing about this is it's 12 and 6. Okay, they're connected, right? So when I multiply, set 12 times negative 7, I'll get negative 84 divided by 6x plus 12 times 1 is 12. And we get 14x here. Now, that one right there, if I divide 6 into 84, notice that we end up with a nice even number. We like that. So it's actually 14x plus negative 14x plus 12 equals 1. Now, look at that. Those are going to eliminate, so I get 12 equals 1, which is not true. So that's one of those specials, and when it doesn't work, we call that no solution, and we move on. Okay, number 10. So number 10, we've got 3x minus 5y equals negative 19, negative 6x minus 7y equals 4. See, once again, this one isn't looking 
all that simplified. Okay. So what I want to do is oh see I'm not sure there's nothing that's jumping out to me. I'll probably just go with the smallest number. So 3x, so I'd add 5y to both sides. So we get 3x equals negative 19 plus 5y. Now there's two ways I can do this. Okay, I can look at this negative 6x and say, is there a way I can make that a 3x? Well, isn't negative 2 times 3x going to give us a negative 6x? So just like I can sub substitute one variable, I could substitute this whole piece for this whole piece and put in this for the 3x. So I'd get negative 2 times negative 19 plus 5y minus 7y equals 4. That's probably the easiest way to do if you can understand that connection. Then I multiply and we get positive 38 minus 10y minus 7y equals 4. Combine those and we get negative 17y equals subtract 38. We get negative 34 divided by negative 17. And we get y equals positive 2. Once we know what y is, I go 3x equals negative 19 plus 5 times, what was that, positive 2 for y. So that's 10. So negative 19 plus 10 would equal negative 9. So 3x equals negative 9 divided by 3. And we get x equals negative 3. So my answer, negative 3, positive 2. Okay, the other way would be to divide everything by 3. So I'd end up with x equals negative 19 thirds plus 5 thirds y. Now, when I plug that in for x, I would end up simplifying that and getting through, getting the same results. Because that 3 and those 6s are connected, so they would simplify fairly nicely. But I'm not going to take the time to do that, because uh, we've still got quite a few more problems and I'm running out of time. So on this one, okay, I look at 11, and I'd probably try to solve for this 3y. Um, or actually, I could do the same thing and solve for 2x and think, okay, instead of 6x, think of that as 3 times 2x plus 9y equals negative 45. Then when I subtract 3y from both sides, I end up with 2x equals negative 3y minus 15. So that 2x, I'm going to sub out. And I'm going to sub in negative 3y plus 5. And then this I'm going to solve. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9y. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus 9y equals negative 45. Negative 9, positive 9. Cancel out. Does 15 equal negative 45? Nope. So no solution. There is no answer here that will work. Okay. This next one. Same idea, except I can't really solve for anything too easily. Because there's no connections I'm seeing here. The x's have no connection to y's. So I'm going to solve for that x. So I get 2x equals negative 7y minus 12. And divide by 2. I get x equals negative 7 halves y minus 6. So take my other equation. Substitute in for x. Negative 7 halves y minus 6 plus 5y equals 4. That becomes negative 21, 2 over 2y minus 18 plus 5y equals 4. Add 18 to both sides. That would give me negative 21 halves y plus 5y equals 22. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to times everything by 2. Because times and that by 2 will get a negative 21y plus times and that will be 10y. So I'm just doubling everything because then I'm dealing with whole numbers. So simplify that and we get negative 11y equals 44. Divide by negative 11 and y equals negative 4. I know that y is negative 4 so now negative 7 halves times negative 4 minus 6. Okay, so that would be positive 28 over 2, which reduces to 14. 14 minus 6 is 8, so x equals 8, y equals negative 4, so the point where they intersect, 8, negative 4. 
All right. So, all right. Same idea with this 13. I would add 4x to both sides, so I'd have 2y equals 4x minus 4. I'd say, really, isn't 6 the same as it's 3 times 2, so I could go 3 times 2y. So I sub out the 2y, and I get 7x minus 3 times 4x minus 4 equals 17. Multiply 7x, negative 12x, positive 12 equals 17. Okay, negative 5x minus 12 equals 5, divide by negative 5, and x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1, so I plug in negative 1 for x. 2y equals negative 4 minus 4. 2y equals negative 8, divide by 2. y equals negative 4. So I've got negative 1, negative 4. One answer, that's where it is. All right, number 14, same idea here. Um, I could add the 8x to both sides. Now notice I've got 8, 8, and 8, so this one isn't going to be so bad. 8y equals 8x minus 8. Divide by 8, y equals 1x minus 1. Substitute it in for y. Negative 16x plus 16 times x minus 1 equals negative 4 times it through. Negative 16x plus 16x minus 16 equals negative 4. Okay, add 16 to both sides. Cancel those out, right? So 0 equals positive 12. That is not true, so no solution. All right, last two problems, and I got three minutes. Okay, on this one, 5 and 6 and 13... There's no connection there. But what about 8 and 2 and 2? I know I'm going to have to divide by one of these coefficients, so 2 can go into both of these. So I want to solve for 2y. So negative 2y equals 2 plus 8x. Because when I divide by negative 2, I'm going to get a nice, easy numbers for each one of these. Okay. So then when I take my other one, it makes it a lot nicer substituting in that y. Distribute negative 5x plus 6 plus 24x plus negative 13. Negative 5, positive 24, positive 19x. Subtract 6 equals negative 19. Divide by 19. We get x equals negative 1. Put in a negative 1 for x. So y equals negative 1 plus 4. So y equals positive 3. So negative 1, positive 3. There's my answer for that one. Now taking a look at our last problem here. So, 8x minus 2y equals 20. Negative 4x minus 8y equals 8. So if I solve for either that negative 4x or that 2y, we're going to get it work to work out. Okay, because those will divide easily. So 8y plus 8 divided by negative 4. We get x equals negative 2y minus 2. So plug in for x, negative 2y minus 2, substitute in x. x is out, and negative 2y minus 2 is in, minus 2y equals 20. So we get negative 16y minus 16 minus 2y equals 20. Okay, add 16. That will give us 36. Negative 16 and minus 2 is negative 18y. Divide by negative 18 on both sides. That cancels. We're left with y equals 36 divided by negative 18 is negative 2. For y, plug it in. Negative times negative is positive 4. Minus 2 is 2. x equals 2. y equals negative 2. So 2, negative 2. So there we go, guys. So there's all the possibilities you got. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes there. And there we go. Tons of examples, and hopefully you guys should be able to do that substitution just fine from now on.